Ladies and gentlemen, have I got some exciting news for you. The Metal Meltdown recently crossed 4,000 subscribers. 4,000, wow. And in honor of this momentous occasion, we will be hosting our 4K celebration live stream this coming Sunday, June 13th, at approximately 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna drink, we're gonna chill, we're gonna shoot the shit, party, listen to music, play some video games, and by popular demand, yes, one of those video games will be the one and only Dream Daddy. Y'all have been asking me, begging me to replay this game ever since the Christmas stream, and it's finally gonna happen. This is a party you're not gonna wanna miss, ladies and gentlemen, especially since, quite frankly, now that I'm back at work full time, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of these streams going forward. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to do one every month, but I can't guarantee jack fucking shit. This could very likely be the last stream for quite a while. So, make sure you tune the fuck in, and make sure you party June 13th, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Alright, that's it. On with the regular video, which has been in production for like two fucking weeks at this point. Oh my fucking god. Booyah, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost halfway through 2021, a year that has been chock full of delightful and delicious tunery. And in honor of this momentous occasion today, we are talking about some of the best metal of 2021 so far. <laughs> A couple ground rules before we start. One, I will only be including albums that I have fully reviewed on the Metal Meltdown. So albums that I have not reviewed at all, obviously don't count. Same goes for albums that maybe I've talked about in streams or comment sections, and even albums I missed videos. They might be great, but they weren't subject to a full album review and therefore will not be included, so... Sorry. And second, as per the norm on the Metal Meltdown, this is not a ranked or numbered list. We are simply going to talk about each album in order of release, and if I have a number one album of the year, we will talk about it when we arrive at it. With that in mind, let's officially kick things off. My first album is An Unexpected Reality from Gate Creeper, released January 13th via Closed Casket Activities. While fans, critics, and even those in Gatekeeper themselves have been debating quite publicly whether or not this is a full-blown studio album, an EP, or something else entirely, I've just been enjoying the sheer fucking extremity of an unexpected reality. An album that sees the band's now signature smorgasbordian approach to death metal expanding into other areas of extreme metal, with side A taking a lot of influence from classic grindcore, whereas side B is dominated entirely by a very lush and evocative death doom number. The production is amazing on here, the drums have this incredible, crusty, beefy sound to them, everything is just performed with the utmost enthusiasm and, and carnage and devastation, it's just a remarkable listen. What more can I say, man? Shit fucking rips. Even if it isn't a full-blown studio album, there's more than enough meat and substance here to keep me full until the next full-blown studio album. Next up, we have Where the Gloom Becomes Sound from Tribulation, released January 29th via Century Media Records and Metal Blade Records. I've always been fascinated by Tribulation's never-ending experimentation with black metal, but this record sees them at their most ambitious, at their most poignant, at their most pungent, and triumphant. This album is bigger, bolder, funkier, scarier. It's bringing in influences from across the black metal and extreme metal spectrum, from melodic black metal and black and roll, from gothic metal, from occult rock, from psychedelia, and from times even some industrial. It is remarkably catchy as we 
we speak, songs like Leviathan and In Remembrance are ringing through my head right now, but despite that, it never compromises its atmosphere. There is a very thick layer of fog and smoke consistently surrounding this record, making it simultaneously their darkest album and their most accessible album to date. There's a really impressive balance of, of melody and brutality here. It's just an incredible record, man, and one of the few that I'm pretty certain is going to be on my final top 10 list at the end of 2021. Next up, we have Seven Evil Spawned of Seven Heads, the debut album from Swamp Beast, released February 12th via Translation Loss. It's been a pretty spectacular year for death metal so far, with standout records coming from nearly every corner and subsection of the genre. But, with all due respect, my pick for best death metal album of the year so far is, without question, this debut album from Swamp Beast. An absolutely disgusting barrage of death metal brutality. The songs are so dynamic and striking and evil, caked in mold and blood and slime and sludge and pus. It constantly rampages around like some kind of mad animal, but never compromises substance or, or heart or soul. There are still some really great arrangements here, some really great performances here. There's a really great atmosphere weirdly constructed by the overwhelming chaos and madness. Like, just the other day I re-listened to this thing, and I was once again blown away by just how incredibly fucking heavy and violent this goddamn thing is. It's... It's just fucking fantastic, man. Next up, we have Imperative Imperceptible Impulse from Ad Nauseam, released February 12th via Avant-Garde Music, and the first album this year that I gave a 5 out of 5. Admittedly, I have not returned to this record as much as some others uh, in this list, but not because I've changed my mind or anything, not because it's lost its luster, simply because this is an album that requires a very specific kind of setting, and I don't always have the time to give ad nauseum that setting. It occupies a space very similar to that of Obscura from Gorguts, you know? It's not something I'm gonna be playing at the family barbecue, to put it bluntly. But still, I feel pretty happy with that 5 out of 5 score because, much like Obscura from Gorguts, I think this album has kind of, like, rewritten the rules of tech death and avant-garde and progressive metal. Like, there are so many layers to this album that I'm still only now beginning to unravel thanks to its insane production its dizzying and abrasive arrangements, its non-stop flurry of, of technicality and musicianship and insane songwriting. There is a level of dedication and intelligence to this record that just isn't really found in a lot of tech def nowadays, while so many other bands are just obsessed with playing at the literal speed of light and showing off how fucking cool they can shred. Ad nauseum is trying to create something totally unique, something totally dark and fucked up, and something that could not be replicated even if ad nauseum themselves went out of their way to try and do so. It's punishing, it's uncompromising, it's a masterful display of technicality and musicianship and songwriting, and for all those reasons, even though, again, I maybe haven't revisited this album as much as I should, I would still give this a 5 out of 5, and as such, I would happily place it on this very list. Next up, we have Demonic Wealth from Kralis, released independently on March 5th. This is an incredibly primitive and bizarre kind of atmospheric black metal, even by the standards of Kralis and its leader, Colin Marston. This is a pretty unorthodox display with a pretty unorthodox uh, production and creation process. Like, a lot of this was recorded in isolation in a remarkably short amount of time. If I'm not mistaken, the bass tracks were literally recorded in somebody's fucking car. It's very grimy and raw and rough around the edges as a result, but despite that, I think it manages some really exciting music. Like, the synth work all throughout this album 
is fantastic. It makes me feel like I'm wandering through the void of space. I love how dark so much of the written material is. I love the the chaos that this album just kind of exists in. It feels like something that was pulled out of this cold and lifeless void that Kralis was just somehow living in for a brief period, which I guess to some extent is a leg a, a, something that probably did actually happen because, you know, COVID. I think much like the Ad Nauseam record, this is an album that requires a very specific and unique setting, but if you can find it, I promise you will not be disappointed with the dark and immersive and intense tunes that you shall be met with. Next up, we have Burn in Many Mirrors from Woad, released April 2nd via 20 Bucks Spin. Man, this album was a fucking trip. A devastating maelstrom of black and death metal with some really insane crippling guitar work, incredible production, and a level of, of chaos and intelligence akin to that of some other 20 buck spin bands. Like, I was specifically reminded of, like, Providence from Ulthar last year, which was coincidentally one of my favorite albums of 2020. It's super gross, super brutal, super in your face, super chaotic. It's everything I kind of love about black metal and death metal combined into one explosive little cocktail. Pretty much the moment I dropped my review for this album, there were a lot of people telling me that I was overreacting, that I was overhyping this thing, I didn't know what I was talking about, I needed to go back and listen to the other records, and blah 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 blah. And that's fine, don't get me wrong, everyone's entitled to their opinion, you're allowed to think I was overreacting if that makes you feel better. But I went back and listened to those Woad albums, and they're not bad, but this was just way more interesting. This was just way more engaging and entertaining to me. In the title for that album review, I implied that this could be the best black metal album of 2021. In retrospect, I'll, I'll concede it was maybe a, a not-so-sincere piece of clickbait, but hey! It's still a banging record. It's still at least one of the best black metal albums of 2021. If I didn't believe that on some level, it wouldn't be on this list. So, you know, do with that information whatever the fuck you please. Next up, we have Skin Show from The Lion's Daughter, released April 9th via Season of Mist. This was one of my most anticipated albums of 2021, and it did not disappoint one bit with an absolutely dreadful and intoxicating fusion of sludge metal, black metal, alternative metal, and 1980s synth rock and pop. The lyrics were a lot darker with the album adopting a quasi-concept that placed it in this kind of dystopian 1970s New York City seeped in sex and horror and violence and the lion's daughter take advantage of this environment with some really serene and dreadful keyboards, some really heavy songs, some really gross vocals. It's hypnotic, exciting, unpredictable, genuinely extremely catchy, and tracks like the Neon Teeth remain some of my favorite of the year so far. As we speak, this is yet another song that's pretty firmly lodged in my head. All in all, an incredibly ambitious and entertaining album from perhaps one of the most unique bands to pop out of extreme metal within the last few years. And quite possibly, yet another album that I could picture probably being on my final list at the end of 2021. Next up, we have Cursed Be Thy Kingdom from Bewitcher, released April 16th via Century Media Records. This album is so much fucking fun, it's almost unreal. A raucous, sleazy, nostalgic blend of thrash metal, speed metal, old school heavy metal, with a little bit of a hard rock flair. You know, it's clear these guys, they love Venom and they love Motorhead just as much as they love Def Leppard and Guns N' Roses. It's just pure, nasty, unadulterated, heavy metal mayhem. It, it's a greasy cheese pizza. It's a delicious fucking cheeseburger with a six-pack of cold fucking beer. And what's not to like about that? There are some parts that could arguably be derivative of some other bands out there right now, but I don't think I care because I don't think anyone is performing this style of in-your-face insanity with the same level of enthusiasm and piss and vinegar that Bewitcher is consistently displaying. Nor are they doing it with the professionalism that is on display. I mean, the sound mix here is so fucking crisp and crystal clear. It's probably from a production standpoint one of the 
the best sounding metal albums of the year so far. It's also Bewitcher's best album to date. If for whatever reason you haven't gotten your hands on this particularly filthy slice of heavy metal carnage, you need to do so right goddamn now. Next up, we have And Again in the Light from Panopticon, released May 15th via Bindroom Recordings. And this is my number one album of 2021 so far. Not just my number one metal album, but my number one album period. This album has proven to be an incredibly emotional and cathartic experience for me, not just because it's fusion of Appalachian folk and Americana and melodic and atmospheric black metal is extremely deeply comforting and nostalgic for me, transporting me back to the Tennessee log cabins of my youth, but also because this black metal album from Panopticon, more so than anything else Panopticon has made, is born not out of spite, hatred, and malice, but out of humility, out of maturity, out of honesty. It is black metal that sees the light out of the end of the tunnel and is walking, nay, running towards it. There's a real perseverance to this album that I think is genuinely really inspiring and, and powerful, particularly when those breathtaking strings collide with that furious black metal, when spoken word pieces are brought in, when poetry and, and samples are brought in, when uh, bluegrass elements are brought into the sound with slide guitars and banjos. It's all so deeply powerful, so consistently powerful, even now a month after having reviewed it. I won't talk about this album too much more. I've already talked about it quite a lot between my album review and between the Metal Trenches video I was on not that long ago. Uh, so I'll just wrap it up here by saying that this is my favorite black metal album of the year, my favorite metal album of the year, my favorite album of the year, period. I gave it a five out of five and I stand by it because I think this is a fucking perfect record. And last but not least, we have Deal and Death from Vulture, released May 21st via Metal Blade Records. The best thrash metal album of 2021, period. No disrespect to Evile, Enforced, Cryptosis, Necromantheon, Paranorm, but this just fucking slaps. A psychotic, demented, razor-sharp fusion of influences and sounds pulled from American thrash metal, from German thrash metal, from Canadian thrash metal, from first wave black metal and speed metal. It is so much fun. It is so catchy. Every riff just bangs. Every solo just fucking shreds. The vocals are so wild and over the top and animalistic. I'm reminded of like Paul Bela from Exodus and even a little bit of King Diamond at times. The performances, the musicianship, it's just insane. There's a level of technical prowess that isn't sometimes found in a lot of this like super raw old school thrash metal. And speaking of which, let's talk about the fact that this album really does kind of sound like it really could have been pulled out of like 1986. The production does a really great job of making this feel like a long lost underground thrash metal gem, something that could have existed in the glory days of Metallica and Slayer and Exodus and so many more. It is just super fun, super nasty. If you can't have fun with this, then I have to assume on some level, you're just not a very fun person, honestly. And that's it for me. I tried not to go into too much detail because we're talking about so many albums and because I've already done that in all of the album reviews I've done for all of these albums. So I hope this will suffice. If not, well, um, too fucking bad, I guess. We're already at the end of the video, so deal with it. Let me know what your favorite metal albums of 2021 so far. While we're at it, why don't you go ahead and tell me what other albums you're looking forward to hearing in 2021. Press this button right here to subscribe and get updates on the Metal Meltdown fucking immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.